Let's say that you and your friend are playing a game of marbles, and let's suppose that there are seven marbles in total. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green marbles in total. Now you're really enjoying this game of marbles, and you want to take half of them home with you. Since you're your friend, you'd like to be fair about this. You take three marbles at first, so I take three marbles at first, but then you realize that there are four marbles left over, and that's not fair. So to compensate for this, you see what happens if you take another marble. Let's say you take four marbles instead, but now your friend is left with just three marbles, and that isn't fair to your friend. Is there a way to share all seven marbles between the two of you, so that both of you receive an equal amount? The answer is, of course, no. Another way of asking this question is to look at the equation 2x equals 7. The problem we're trying to solve is, for what value of x does this equation hold? Well, since x can only be a whole number, this equation has no solutions, and so what you're trying to do is impossible. However, as I'm sure you already know, it is possible to solve this equation, provided that you want to invent numbers which are not integers. So in other words, this equation is possible to solve, provided that you're willing to accept some new numbers called fractions or the rational numbers, so that the equation will then have a solution. Do we want this equation to have a solution? Well, it depends entirely on the context. In the case of the marbles, it wasn't really meaningful to have three and a half marbles as a solution, because you can't take three and a half marbles, at least not without breaking them, and nobody really wants a broken marble to play with. However, if we were trying to split, I don't know, a piece of string in half that was of length seven centimeters, then inventing the rational numbers would be meaningful, because then you could easily just cut this string in half, and you'd have an equal amount for each person. So you might have already seen where I'm going with this. And now I want to talk about the real numbers. So what's a real number? So a real number is, by definition, any number whose square is greater than or equal to zero. So the real numbers, so real numbers, and that's usually denoted with a bold face R, that's defined as the set of all numbers x such that x squared is greater than or equal to zero. So that's all the non-negative numbers uh, that's all the numbers who square to give a non-negative number. So that's what I mean by a real number. But then I ask, what do you do if you encounter a equation like x squared equals minus 1? So if I had the equation x squared equals minus 1, and you ask, does this equation have a solution? Does it have a solution? Well, if we insist that x be a real number, then this does not have a solution, because by our definition of what a real number is, the square of a, num the square of a real number cannot be negative, whilst this says that the square, of a number the, the square of a real number is negative. So either we can say that this equation does not have solutions, or we can invent a new system of numbers, in the same way that we had to invent, or be willing to accept, that there were other types of numbers called the rational numbers to solve the equation up here, 2x equals 7. So what we're going to do is we're going to invent a new kind of number, the complex numbers, which we define as follows. So let's define the complex numbers. What is a complex number? Well, the set of all complex numbers C, that's a boldface C, just like the real numbers was a boldface R, this is a boldface C to denote the complex numbers. That's defined as the set of all X plus I, Y, and I'll define what I mean by I in a second, such that X and Y are real. So x is a real number and y is a real number, I just need to talk about this i. So what is this i symbol? So this i symbol is defined as i squared equals minus 1, or if you like, i equals the square root of minus 1. And this i is something which we now accept to be a solution of this equation, x squared equals minus 1. That's by definition of i. And it's the fundamental building block to form the set of complex numbers. And just like the real numbers, uh, we can define a set of rules in them to understand how complex numbers interact with each other under different operations, how real numbers interact with them, and so on and so forth. So when I write a complex number, I'll usually use a letter like Z or W. So normally for complex numbers, I'll use Z and W just to distinguish it from a real number. So when I write Z, for instance, I mean, so if I write Z, what I mean is X plus I, Y. And what that means is x is the real part of z and y is the imaginary part of z. So how do I normally write this? Well, I've got z uh, as a real number plus i times its imaginary part. 
So to write this, I usually say that x is the real part of z, that's what re means, and I also say that y is the imaginary part of z. So that's what I mean by real and imaginary part. x is the real part and y is the imaginary part. Now here's something that I want you to notice. All of the real numbers are contained in the complex numbers. Why? Well, let's see what happens when I suppose that z has an imaginary part of zero. So let's suppose that the y is equal to zero. So what happens? Well, I've got z is equal to x plus zero i, and zero times i is zero, so that means that z is equal to x. So I'm just left with z equals x. But x is just a real number. In other words, the real numbers are just the set of all complex numbers which have zero imaginary part. So that's what I mean by that. And similarly, the imaginary parts which sometimes people write as uh, ir, I mean, I like to write it like this anyway, that's just the set of all complex numbers which have a real part of zero. In other words, if instead of setting y equal to zero, I set x equal to zero. So when x is equal to zero, what happens? And so if x is equal to zero, then I've got z is equal to zero plus i y, which is just i y. So I'm left with z equals i y, something which is purely imaginary with a real part of zero. So that's what I mean by a complex number. And in the next series of videos, we'll look at how we can assign a structure to the complex numbers. That is, does it make sense to add, subtract, multiply, or even divide complex numbers, just as we did with the real numbers? Are there more operations that are useful to us? How are the complex functions defined? Hopefully all of these concepts will become clear to you in the next couple of videos.